Hey, the next speaker, I'm super thrilled because it's a fun conversation. It's about drones. So from imagine like from automated mortgage processing to complete servicing, we we even know about like robots and flying drones for the same. So who says like we pine for what is not right? We get everything these days. So we have with us Jose Geraldo. He is from DroneBase, he heads the strategic partnerships throughout the company. And DroneBase is based out of the beautiful, sunny SoCal city of Santa Monica. Um, I am super thrilled because DroneBase, what they do is they specialize in data capture and analytics, conducting thousands of flights across the country for construction, insurance, property management, and so on and so forth. So Jose, welcome for at the T6 conference. And are you ready? Abby, doing great. Thanks for the introduction. Yes, ready to go. Appreciate awesome. it. Awesome. All yours, Jose. Sure. Excellent. I will go ahead and share my screen here. All right. Hope everybody can see my screen. Well, thank you again for the introduction. I'm happy to be here. My name is Jose Geraldo. I work for a drone software and services company called DroneBase. I head up our partnership and our property verticals, which as Debbie mentioned, includes construction, real estate, insurance, and roofing. I've been in the drone space for about five years now which is quite long for the drone space. I think I'm about to get my master's degree in drones. If that were a real thing, that would be great. <laughs> uh, so I've seen, I've seen these systems really evolve over time. And, and today we'll be talking a little bit about drone technology in the property space. I'll go through some of the evolution of the drones, uh, the value of drones in prop tech, and really how drone base is using this technology in the space. And we'll kind of finish off with some challenges and some fun things to keep an eye on in the future. So thanks again. Just to start off a fun fact, uh, what this little guy is actually writing is the most widely used consumer drone in the world today. Yes, the Roomba, the vacuum that is uh, in a lot of people's houses. So really a drone is any semi or autonomous, full autonomous robot today. Uh, today, we'll actually focus on the flying kind of drone. Uh, the flying kind of drone, also known as a UAV or a unmanned aerial vehicle. And we'll kind of go through the evolution of, of what that is and how you know, the space is using this technology. Really in the early days when you saw or you heard of drone, you thought of that top left, which is kind of a military grade drone required 10 to 20 people to fly it and a runway to take off. It's kind of where our founder and CEO started using the technology. Over time, that system became part of a do-it-yourself kit until around 2013 or so with a company called DJI, who's a, a drone manufacturer, really entered the space uh, today, they own about 75% of the market in relation to drone manufacturing, right? Over the years, as you can see, there's been a lot of different types of drones, and there's a lot of players in the space today, today making these drones. So you can get a drone from anywhere from $2,000 to over $100,000, depending on the type of sensor that you put on that drone. And these drones have grown extensively, their flight time, they now shoot 4K video, have 20 megapixel cameras, obstacle avoidance, and even active tracking, which is uh, used for a lot of extreme sports, for example, skiing or mountain biking, you don't even need to control the drone, it'll just follow you around. In the beginning, a lot of these drones were really seen as more of a toy, but as at least how we've seen it in the property space, they are now part of a toolkit. They're an essential tool within a wider toolkit uh, in the property space to assess condition and other things. So let's dive into a little bit of how drones are used in some sub verticals within PropTech, right? So here you're gonna see a lot of different things like real estate, property management, facility management, uh, indoor mapping, et cetera. 
this is a good overview of kind of the sub verticals that drones are being used today. We actually partner in drone base with a lot of these companies to support kind of their data capture efforts. But let's dig into a few of them. So real estate, for example, that one, commercial, residential, everybody's trying to digitize all of their assets, whether you're trying to sell, buy, or lease a property. It's actually where drone base started because it had the least barrier of entry. You're trying to sell a property. Great. You need a pretty picture. You need a marketing picture to show. And what better way than an aerial picture uh, via a drone? Now we see things like indoor mapping where you can create 3D models and maps of the indoor. Well, we focus with drone technology on the exterior. We create 2D maps or 3D models of the entire property to quickly assess the conditions within that exterior space. Property and facility management. Instead of climbing up on a roof or walking a very large parking lot, a drone today can take high resolution imagery of the roof, of the facade, landscaping, or pavement. And what that is doing is really creating a desk adjustment solution where you can sit in a desk and make a decision about the property without even having to be on site, right? The imagery is taken, uploaded to a platform. You can visualize it and make the right decisions. And in turn, what that is doing is really speeding up our inspection process. Traditionally, it could have taken somebody two or three hours to walk through a parking lot or a property where it takes a drone 20 to 30 minutes to capture all of this high resolution imagery enough for somebody to make the right decisions on what needs to be done on that property, whether residential or commercial. It also addresses a big concern in terms of safety. Uh, traditionally, People have been climbing on roofs, ladders, residential. If it's a unique roof with a steep pitch, it's very dangerous. On the commercial structure, if it's very large, uh, very high, also dangerous. So the drones give us the ability to capture the right imagery uh, from different vantage points without having some of those safety concerns. In construction management, Companies used to use planes and helicopters to monitor projects and would use them sparingly due to the cost of, of getting one of those out. Today, we are on hundreds of flights using drone technology, uh, hundreds of sites nationwide to track construction projects daily, weekly, and monthly. And the ability to use this technology more uh, repetitively allows us for better planning, quality control, risk mitigation, and most importantly, allows us to make sure that the project is on track to finish when it should, right? So this technology has really enabled uh, a lot of that functionality within the construction space. Now, the last one we'll touch on is really portfolio management. This is an interesting one because the drone technology is a essential piece of coupled with a platform on portfolio management. This is actually where DroneBase comes into play with our Insights platform and the world's largest network of drone pilots. Together, we give our kind of customers and partners the ability to manage their portfolios remotely. remotely. So I'll kind of touch a little bit on DroneBase as well and give an overview of, um, of where we kind of are at. So who's drone base? What do we do? We've been around since 2014, uh, pretty early in the drone space. And we started building the world's largest network of drone pilots. We have over 80,000 of them. And today we work with partners to manage the full life cycle of their assets across different stages. So we use drone technology for site selection, large parcels of land across the country or globally you might wanna develop on, construction monitoring, marketing that asset once it's built and maintaining it as well. Our insights platform not only, not only gives you access to our network of pilots, which is nationwide and global, but it also allows you to get a global view 
of the condition of your assets. What is the health of the pavement, of the roof, of the facade of your buildings? So we really try to focus on, on the full life cycle in the property space. Now, as I mentioned, uh, we work with a lot of companies. Now, the top CRE companies in the country, we work with real estate investment trusts, investment properties to assess a quarterly and annually. We also work with a lot of mortgage loan companies for foreclosures, routine inspections, and disaster response. Uh, our network allows us to be on site extremely fast nationwide. Now, you can have a global view of all of your assets nationwide or globally again, or, and you can dig in a little more. Now, this is a screen of a couple of buildings. Each one of these dots is actually where an image was taken from the drone. Every image from a drone is geo-referenced. So it has the X, Y, Z coordinate of exactly where it was taken. And every one of these dots also has a color and each one of those color is associated to a severity. So we provide a, a view of the condition of that property with recommendations. So we capture the imagery, it goes through our AI assisted uh, programs. Then we have an in-house team of roof analysts that provide recommendations and deliver that to the customers all supported by kind of that drone imagery. Now, as we mentioned, uh, drones can have a lot of sensors. So and one of those is a thermal sensor. Thermal is becoming more and more popular in the property space because of moisture under the membrane. This is something that is extremely expensive. If it is not caught early, you would have to replace larger sections or potentially the entire roof. But a thermal sensor on a drone allows us to see that moisture under the roof membrane. Now, something that a lot of people don't know as well is you can derive measurements from a drone. So traditionally, somebody had to climb on that roof and actually uh, measure it with a measuring tape. Now we can just fly over it and create a model and derive accurate measurements from there. This is just a quick overview of how the space has really scaled up over the years where our network was before five or 10,000. Now we have over 80,000 pilots in our network, right? And even though it has grown drastically over the years, there's still some challenges that we're facing in kind of the next phases, uh, which are <clears throat> kind of hindering some adoption, which I wanted to cover as well. So a couple of challenges to, to adoption, right, are FAA regulations. The FAA is a company that owns all the airspace. And even though they have made some really drastic uh, improvements, they could still do a little bit better. Uh, for example, you need to always keep line of sight with your drone. You need to uh, fly under a certain altitude. You can't fly close enough to certain areas. These are things that have made life a little bit harder for certain industries, but are continuing to improve. Technology limitations. How uh, long can a drone actually fly? Today, 20 or 30 minutes. It'd be great if it could fly for an hour or two hours. And then of course, the status quo. We work in some verticals that have been doing things for the same way for 50 to you know, 70 years plus, and it's good enough. And what we have found is when we have an internal champion that is tech forward, that's tech savvy, and is looking for ways to streamline the process, uh, we've seen a lot of success in implementing this new technology to save time, money, and really be able to make better decisions uh, via this uh, imagery and, and, and a lot analysis and technology. Now, even with those challenges, there's still a bright future. There's some exciting things to really take note of and, and look forward to. Uh, this is just a quick graph of how it all started. You needed a very qualified drone pilot to capture imagery. And soon, it's go we're going to get to full automation. Full automation where um, everybody's probably heard of drone delivery, right? 
that is going to be a thing. There's going to be a drone in a box where it could just sit at a property and do routine inspections. You won't actually need a pilot, which you do need today, but that full automation will really assist with that. Uh, just to finish off, this is another use case, not property specific, but really interesting as very dangerous for a lot of people to climb on. And now drones are being used to, to do power lines and things like that, right? So a lot of exciting things in the drone space, specifically on the property space. And we're going to continue to see this technology really, really emerge. So appreciate everybody's time on that. Sorry, I think I was speaking on mute. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It always happens. Thanks so much, Jesse. I have a quick question actually from the audience. Um, this was very, very, very um, insightful and knowledgeable. So the question is, how do we leverage drone for a property inspection which is located in another state? Absolutely. So how do you leverage drone for a property inspection located in another state? So we have pilots that are in all 50 states. Right. So we work with large companies that have hundreds or thousands of locations nationwide. Uh, and we have a platform to order these inspections. Uh, we're built as an API where we integrate with our bigger partners as well. So our systems can talk to each other. Uh, but we go ahead and take care of everything. Really, all we need are the addresses. We go and do the inspection and upload it back to our platform for you to access it. Thank you so much, Jose. Thanks, and I hope you know you have a great rest of the day. And please stay tuned for our next speakers. It would be good to have you as well with us.